kind of hot and spicy with a steamy look it was passed on down by my mother's sweet she told me honey this will be a real good treat to turn a man's heart into a buttercream well you cook a dish that makes him want jump and scream so come into my kitchen come into my kitchen come down to my kitchen Come into my kitchen. Come into my kitchen. Come on down to my kitchen. Won't you come into my kitchen and I will feed you fine. Well, I got the tools to make a culinary score. And when you eat my cooking, you'll be wanting more. So, um, my dough has been um, sitting for, for a few minutes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we could have started rolling right away. It doesn't hurt the dough, though, to sit a little bit, to let that, to let that loosen up. But it's, uh, it's a very smooth dough. And we have our filling, which we've, uh, which we've made in our handy-dandy um, cutter. And uh, it's looking good. So let's, um, let's make some dumplings. So although it's tempting to um, make a long strip of uh, dough and you know, try to crank out um, assembly line style, you know, 20 or 30 uh, dumplings, don't do that. Um, let's just start with a, a golf ball size piece of dough and that's going to let you roll out probably you know, six, six or eight dumplings at a time, and that will keep the dough from drying out. Because as soon as you roll this out, it immediately starts drying out. And you definitely do not want your uh, dough to, to get brittle. So um, rather than using a, a rolling pin, which is certainly tried and true way, I like to use my handy dandy uh, pasta rolling machine. And you know, I just keep mine right in the drawer because I, I pull it out and I, I use it a couple times a week. So I just start off just like this and get thinner and thinner. It happens pretty quickly. There we go. And you know, depending if you're if you're feeling like you need to. Um, Knead it a little bit more. You can just fold it in half and um, put it through like that. And if it turns out that you don't like it, you can just uh, start it again. And if it, if it feels a little bit wet, what you can do is just get a little bit of, I'll show you. This was a little bit damper than I wanted it to be. So you can just dust it Pull it out and just put that through just like that. So it kind of, you can um, kind of make some micro adjustments to your dough if you like. All right. So when you've got it to the thickness that you like, and this is a pretty, this will be a, a pretty robust uh, dumpling. I get, um, I'll use a cutter here. And we'll just make a couple of these. And then what I do, what you can do is you can take your scrids and you can just put that through again. And you can just keep keep cutting them out. So at the thinnest setting that you rolled at, where are you on your? Uh, oh, machine? I'm on next to the thinnest. So second to thinnest. Yeah, yeah. So and again, you can you know again you know kind of with experience you can decide how how fine you like to do that. All right, and. I got one more. I might as well do it. <laughs> so 
We'll just put that through this way. Let's see if we can do it. It's always kind of a fun little game. That's pretty quick. And I think I said I could make six or so. So, and then we can just add this to the grid. So, let's, let's fold a couple of these guys. I'll clear these decks so it's just not distracting. So I like to use, um, use a, a clock metaphor in this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of filling right in the center of the clock. And I will usually arrange it in a um, kind of a football shape because that's kind of the shape of the, the dumpling that we're going to have. And at 12 o'clock, I'm going to make a pleat and just squeeze it like that. And then at one o'clock, I'll make another pleat. And at two o'clock, I'll make another pleat. Then I'm gonna go back to 11 o'clock and make a pleat. And then at 10 o'clock and make a pleat. So now what I've got is I've got my um, filling is starting to get enclosed by the dumpling wrapper. And then I'm going to take 6 o'clock. I'm going to just bring that right up to 12 o'clock. And I'm going to just seal that right in. And this is, um, Jeff kind of mentioned the stegosaurus. So this is a dumpling. And in fact, I've got another one that I think of as even more stegosaurus than that one. All right. Well, you'll get to do that. Yeah. All right. So now I know you can stop and rewind, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it again just so we'll, uh, so we'll have that. So there's the, uh, the clock face. And you'll, you'll see that the, um, that the shrimp is, is it's in chunks. So, it's, so, you know, just kind of hitting it a couple times uh, didn't puree it, which is why I like to use this, because it's, you have more control as opposed to the, um, to the uh, mechanical, uh, the electric one, it goes pretty quick. So 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock, 10 o'clock, Bring 12 o'clock up and you want to kind of, it stretches. So you want to stretch that up so that the uh, filling is completely enclosed. If the filling kind of oozes out, what will happen is when you go to cook it, it'll, it'll fall apart on you. So you don't want to do that. There you go. And this is, um, um, J Jeff kind of asked the question, you know, how thick or thin do you do these? Um, yeah, in the beginning, I I go thicker because the uh, the the uh, the wrapper is a little bit more robust. Uh, when you when you're feeling like uh, you're getting a little cocky and you want to roll it out thinner, uh, you could go for it. But um, it doesn't take much for that filling to to break through. All right, and uh, here's the here's the. Uh, the spinach. So why don't we uh, why don't we do do that as well? And the spinach uh, the spinach one definitely feels wetter. Again, I had mentioned earlier that the uh, leaves the spinach leaves will um, lose water a little bit longer. So we'll just uh, we'll get that. I start out you know at the thickest setting and we'll just feed that right in. And you know, once if, if you, you kind of learn your machine and you get the feeling of the dough, um, what you can do is you can you can skip a couple of these settings. You don't have to go in, in lockstep. 
So I am now at that next to the uh, next to the thinnest setting. There we go. And I'll just cut a couple of these. I think you got the idea that I can kind of make the most of what I have here. There we go. And this one's pretty close. All right. And you know, if you want to get fancy, you can uh, you can uh, kind of have a two-sided. You could um, roll two of these out like this, and then you could roll them together through this, and you'll get a uh, two-sided. Or you could kind of overlap them. And then you would get kind of a two-tone that you could uh, then cut and roll. So all kinds of possibilities, fun possibilities. So let's just, um, I'll just fill one of these before we turn it over to Jeff. So he can make his, and then we'll get to do the fun part, which is cooking. And well, actually the fun part is eating them, but all right. And, um, this is good for for Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year or any celebration. If you kind of get the family together, this is a great activity to involve uh, all the generations doing this. So we'll take that up to 12 o'clock, stretch that dough a little bit, and give it a squeeze. And if it dries out and it won't stick together, um, I have a little uh, dish of water here and I would just kind of paint around the edge to, to kind of make that stick. All right. So Jeff, you want your, you want this space back? Sure, you can leave that port right there, I think. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> got this other mix. Probably, I think Chris and I actually could have got away with just one mix, but you did get to see kind of two different styles of making this. So we're gonna find out now. Let's see, this bowl is an extra bowl, so I'm gonna just kind of squeeze this. And you can even see there's water coming out. Throw that in there, and then this second handful. There we go. Now I've also had people say, well, you added water before, why don't you just add this water to the dough? But this water is salty. And I've already put soy sauce in there, and so I don't think I need any more salt. But you can see here I've got, I don't know, it's about a tablespoon, a little more than a tablespoon of water for just a very small amount. That was actually just two Napa cabbage leaves. Um, and so I'm just kind of stir this in. But that gets us a little bit of uh, cabbage into our mix. All right. So let's take a look at our dough. See how our dough is doing. Take this off. And it's definitely, let me bite my hands. Get these little stray bits off. All right, so this dough is looking good. It is now very soft and supple. You can see it even stretches to the point where, you know, for you bread bakers, there's window pane. Uh, I've got window pane test, uh, and I can see through the dough. And, and this is just, again, for the bread bakers who think about these things, this is 50% hydration dough. And we barely needed it, and yet we got a lot of good gluten in this, and so now it's nice and soft and supple. So let's give this stuff. What I usually do with this is I'm going to roll this out by hand. So let me move Chris's dumplings just up there so I don't squash them. One way to do this is literally, this is a bagel making technique. You punch your thumbs through this and get a, effectively a bagel. But the reason I do this is because when I break this, it's a little bit easier that's gonna move on me to get a bit of a rope that's kind of the same thickness throughout. So let's set that aside. So with this dough here, I'm just gonna literally start with this kind of round circle and I'm gonna cut off pieces that, I got the scale out, probably I'm, I'm 
trying to aim for about 15 grams. These actually look a little big. These are better, more like 18, a little thinner than that, but about 15 grams or so each. And you can see after I cut it, it squishes it down, but I usually try and get it back to kind of reform it into the circle. So this face up, these are a little big now, so I'm just going to trim them. Uh, these little bits that are facing up is the cut edge. Right? But dough has memory, and so since I'm doing this by hand, what I find is by taking this, I can now just squash it, and it, it's roundish. It's round enough. Okay, and then I can tell just by feeling it, kind of like Chris is doing, I'm going to go ahead and give that a little bit of of flour just to keep it from sticking and I'm going to do the old-fashioned way and so this is much easier if you happen to have a small rolling pin as opposed to kind of the more like the big long French pins with the tapered edges or the ones with the handles this is a smaller pin and what I'm going to do is I'm only going to roll about a third to a not past the halfway point I'm going to go up and back and then I'm going to rotate the dough a little bit so that I just keep working and rotating so every stroke I rotate what this does is it gets me thinner edges and a slightly thicker middle because once I put the filling in and fold it over, the edges that seal now are thinner, but when I seal them, then they get thicker, right? Uh, and it helps to keep this center part a little bit thicker so that it doesn't blow out when it stretches because you still want it to have some dough to be able to stretch as we fill it. So same thing here. We're going to take, just like Chris did, maybe maybe a tablespoon depends on the size of this simplest thing to do with this is kind of in Chris's analogy 12 and 6 o'clock join them together and then just simply crimp crimp this off seal it with your fingers and this is what when I we started the, the today's episode we were talking about kind of the half moon and I was saying that doesn't look like any money I've ever seen right and so how do we get this to look more like that ingot so we take these two edges, I'm going to take this edge and this edge, and I'm not, I'm going to fold them toward each other this way so it pinches, you can see the pinch, and just overlap a little bit and, and then pinch and seal. Flip this over this way. Now you can see this sitting like this, right, relative to the camera, looks a lot more like that ingot, right, uh, that we saw that from that kind of ancient, and literally ancient, because we're talking over 2,000 year old. Uh, silver ingots that were used as currency to pay for a kind of high-priced expensive things. I don't think anyone was throwing around a silver ingot this size and saying, you know, I need a cup of tea. Uh, but if they were paying their taxes or something like that was a little more expensive or whatever, it's going to be something like that. That is what I think most people think of uh, if they're familiar with one-ton dumplings. That's kind of the one-ton dumpling style shaping or folding. So again, I'm just going to work my way around. The more you do this, the faster you get. When I first started to do this, I was pretty slow, but I got a lot faster over time. And as Chris said, this is a great family activity. Kids can learn to do this pretty quickly. They're good with dough. And then it keeps them away from hot things in the kitchen. And, and so you can have the kids folding dumplings and then those other adults who just want to sit down at a table and do stuff and not be next to the hot stove, they can fold dumplings. In the meantime, someone else in the family can cook the other food. Let me show you some other slight variations though. I mentioned the kind of stegosaurus, same thing, I'm gonna kind of do this. So this is like the, what I think a lot of folks do as their kind of first attempt at creating what is, I think for most people, they've seen this shape, right? This is kind of the classic pot sticker shape, right? And when they're trying to do this, but they're not exactly sure what to do, they start with this half moon and then they just crimp this edge and that was their first try to create this and they kind of look the same until you turn around and you see this is smooth and this is crimped on both sides and so this is why I call this one the stegosaurus because it kind of you got crimps on both sides so it's like the little bony shields and it kind of stands up right uh, so that's another way you can do these um, I think one of the things that I do personally when I'm folding dumplings is I tend to use this shape, something like this, although I don't tend to make stegosaurus, usually it's just added effort. If I'm going to boil the dumpling, 
I'll just sometimes make the half moon and call it good. Um, and when I'm going to do a, a steam fried or pan fried version, and Chris is going to show us that with these, then I'll make this shape. And the reason I do that is because usually when I make dumplings, it's far more than I'm going to eat that day. So I freeze the rest of them, and in the frozen bags, the only way I can tell apart which dumplings were which is the shape in which I folded it. All right. Let's just do a couple other little things here, though, that we can see. So another method you'll see some people do is they'll kind of fold this over and crimp the top, and then they'll use their thumb and first finger. You can see them squeeze and kind of push down a little bit. And the finger, your fingers kind of create this kind of light scalloping kind of texturing, and you get kind of a fat belly on the bottom. It's kind of a fat belly. But these work well for for boiling as well. Uh, and then Chris was alluding to this. If we were to take, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna steal some of your dough here. Take some of this green dough and try and roll it out a little bit. Take some of this white dough, put it in the middle. see if this works because usually I think I need a slightly more than this but anyway take one of those kind of squish it down so I get a it's like a bullseye when we were making Tom Young right so I got the white in the middle green in the outside and I think the green overwhelmed the white There's that, white in the middle, green on the outside. And so if I fill this, and I do that same basic thing that I just did before, which is fold this over and use my fingers to really squeeze this and let the, the lines of my hand kind of starts to resemble like a cabbage leaf. Right? And so you get the, especially with like a bok choy, you get the white stalk on the bottom and the green leaves in the top. So there's another one. And then something else we were gonna do See if we can pull this off. We're making this up on the fly, but uh, I saw someone else do this. We'll see if we can do it. I'm taking these and making smaller, so I'm making very small little wrappers here. And we'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to need four of these. I should probably stop experimenting while I'm on camera. <laughs> So I was thinking about this and I've seen someone else make a dumpling this shape uh, when we were talking about how this shape more resembles the ingot and my earlier uh, kind of readings and having been told stories as a kid about the idea of eating dumplings and the fact that it resembled money. And of course, what did I think of when I thought of old Chinese money, it was those coins that have a square hole in the middle, right? And, I was doing some reading about that, and I guess the square hole was so that they could take those, uh, take the coins and put them onto a, like, essentially a post, like a chopstick, so they could sand and, and kind of smooth out the rough edges of the coin. Um, I guess so it was mostly just, I guess, primarily a practical reality more than anything else. All right, so let's see if this works. So I've got four little teeny dumpling wrappers. So I'm not gonna use a lot of dumpling filling in each, very small amount. And I'm gonna make four little half moons. So there's one. There's two. Number three. Try to get a little bit of a crimped edge there. 
Put that down. And the last one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and combine them into a single dumpling. So if I start with this one here, and then I put this one right here, and lay this one on top of it here, and this one like this, right? You can see that shape. So now if I start to kind of take where these things meet up and squeeze together these edges, now I have a dumpling that is round like a coin with a square middle. So now it looks like those old Chinese coins. So this would be another way, I guess, of uh, kind of literally trying to make a dumpling that resembles the old currency to follow that old tradition of eating dumplings as a symbol of good wealth for the next coming year. So there we go. So there's our other style of coin that probably more of us are familiar with. I think we've all seen those coins uh, because literally looking on Wikipedia, you can find uh, there's Chinese script on those coins. And traditionally, from what I understand, oftentimes that Chinese script is simply the name of the emperor at the time stamped on it and different emperors had different coins made during their time and so that's one of the ways you can date those coins and they're made of a variety of different metals but that they were they were made in such mass volumes that uh, there's still plenty of them hanging around you know and they're not made of gold so it's not like you're finding kind of old spanish uh what do they call galleons or doubloons or whatever and, you know you're not going to get super wealthy by finding some of these things but um but there you go so there's another style of a boiled dumpling uh, there's lots of other shapes we could do, but I, I think we'll we'll stop there for now. Uh, let me do one thing because I've got Chris's wrapper right here. Let me just show another way of doing Chris's um, pot sticker. Same thing, but I tend to not do it on the table. I tend to do it in my hand, but same thing. Just like Chris, I start with kind of the meat in a in more of a football in the length. And thinking about I start right here, so I guess... If this is 12 and this is 3, I'm starting about 2, and I will just simply crimp and then just keep crimping until I've gotten about halfway around. And then, likewise, take this. This is dried out a bit, but, and then squeeze that together. And so I get the same thing. You can see these crimps are a little bit deeper, but that's just, you know, I think it's because they're these have been sitting here on the, on the table, they've gotten dried out. But that's another way to do it. You can do them up in your hands. Uh, another method would be if you want, and it's fewer pleats, if you just do that 6 and 12, and then place, you know the side that's facing is going to be the side without a pleat. The side away from you is the side with the pleat. If I just take this and I fold it like this, yeah, and I get a, I pinch that off, and I'm going to get a single pleat on this side, and then I do the same thing over here, a single pleat on that side. So it's fewer pleats, but it's the same basic shape. The reason I, I like these shapes, all of these, for the pot stickers is they do tend to sit flat, and they get a nice flat bottom, which then gets you a nice surface to brown. These ones, I mean, you can squish them flat, but they tend not to really have a a bottom and they don't stand so and this is why I tend to boil this style of a dumpling. All right so we've got some pot stickers here, some dumplings to boil and we're gonna cook them now. Spicy with a steamy look it was passed on down by my mother's sweet. She told me honey this will be a real good treat to turn a man's heart into a buttercream. Well, you... So we are excited about cooking our, our dumplings. And um, this first dumpling that, that we're gonna be cooking, uh, their traditional name is called pot stickers. And uh, the, there's a kind of an interesting story as to how pot stickers were invented and how they got their name. So uh, the story goes that there was an emperor and uh, you know several hundreds of years ago uh, whose favorite dumpling was boiled dumplings. And uh, every day at noon, 
um, his special dumpling chef would uh, prepare boiled dumplings for him. Well, it turned out that this particular chef um, was easily distracted by the ladies of the court. And so one day while he was uh, working on the dumplings, he started talking to the ladies of the court, the empress, and um, the, he could hear the emperor coming down the hall. And at the same time, he smelled something hot and, uh, and kind of just beginning to burn. And he realized that the water had boiled out of the, the dumpling pot and the dumplings were beginning to burn. And from experience, he knew that if someone made a mistake, especially of that magnitude, um, heads could roll. So out of desperation, what he did was he got some water and he quickly put it into the, the uh, pot of uh, dumplings and covered it quickly, hoping, hoping, hoping that you know, the water would kind of rejuvenate the dumplings. Um, but he noticed that that isn't what happened. But what he did was, as the emperor was sitting down for his favorite boiled dumplings, he said, Your Highness, Your Majesty, in your honor, I have invented a new type of dumpling. It's amazing. It's crispy on the bottom and it's steamed on the top and it's really savory. And uh, so he served the emperor the dumplings that he had to scrape off the bottom of the pot because they were stuck. And the emperor tasted it, paused, and he told the chef, these are my new favorite dumplings. So, some fast thinking saved the uh, saved the uh, cook's life. So that's what we're going to do essentially, is we're going to start off with a little bit of oil, just in the bottom of the pan, just covering the bottom of the pan. We're not deep frying these. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take our dumplings that we folded that are flat on the bottom. So these stegosaurus style dumplings as opposed to the flatter dumplings um, are, are usually boiled. These uh, we will actually use to fry them. And what we'll do, I'll explain what we'll do and we'll do it again. But we're going to brown these on the bottom. And while they're browning, Jeff will uh, put his on to boil. But what will happen then is we will cover these quickly and we'll put in just a tablespoon or two of water. You have to make sure your cover is right here though because you know what happens when you put water in hot oil. It's going to splatter very quickly. So let's do that. Our oil is here. And so let me just spread that on the bottom and we'll just put these in and they're, they're sizzling away already which is great. All right, so let me, I'm going to cover these guys, and Jeff, there you go. All right, so the boiled dumplings, fortunately, is a very simple process. Um, you don't even have to do this because oftentimes you get away with it and it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna show you what I kind of refer to as the Chinese sous vide. Uh, and what we're gonna do is simply, we've got some boiling water here and all we need to do is just drop these guys in here. And the only thing I'm gonna do is, once I get these in here, I'm gonna give them a quick stir just to make sure they don't settle to the bottom and uh, stick. But otherwise, what we wanna do is you know, dumplings are, tend to be cooked when they're floating, but you can see the water now is at a hard boil, right? It's rolling, it's moving. So we know that water is full up to you know, 200, 1200 degrees centigrade. I'm gonna actually add in some cold water here and stop the boil. And so that keeps the temperature just down a little bit below. And in fact, I might even turn this heat down because this is such a hot stove. So it's not boiling so fast. 
And when it gets back up to a hard boil, I'm going to dump in more water, stop the boil again. The idea being, we don't want the water fully up to temp. If we could actually had a sous vide and we could boil or, or you know, cook these in probably 180 degree water or something, then what that allows the, the dumpling to do is it gives a little bit more time for the heat to penetrate to cook the meat inside without overcooking the dumpling wrapper, right? Because we all know like if you cook spaghetti and you let it sit way too long in the water and you get mush, we don't want the dumpling wrapper to mush out on us. And so uh, part, of, part of the way we do that is by keeping the, the water temperature not too high. And so you can accomplish that partly by turning down the heat a little bit so it's, it's barely bubbling. Uh, but also when it does get to a rolling boil, just add a little bit more cold water. Oftentimes I used to watch my grandmother do this and it was basically three times with cold water and it, after the third one, when it came back to the boil again, then she'd pull them out and they were cooked, right? And so that's another way you can kind of even time it. Of course, I think everyone's stove is different, depends on how much water you've got, but it is just one way. But really the, the key is you can see they're even starting to, 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 bo to uh, float a little bit. When they're floating and they're really up there floating, then you know they're they're really cooked through. All right, Chris, I can hear your dumplings are crackling on the inside. Maybe we need a little water in there. All right, so our dumplings are sizzling in here. So this is kind of the equivalent of the uh, of the cook losing track with, with the ladies of the court. And um, what's kind of nice about this is because it's not hot on the top, you can kind of you can see that starting to brown, which is nice, which is exactly what we want. All right. And if we were fancy, we could, you know, make these into a pinwheel shape or something like that inside. So um, these are going to take maybe another minute or so. And in that minute, what I'm going to do is make a quick dipping sauce. And uh, Jeff will probably have one of his own that he likes, but mine is pretty pretty simple. I like a little vinegar, a little salt, and this is the thick soy glaze, and a little bit of heat. And so I'm going to use this hot sesame oil. And what I will do is I'll, I'm going to go equal parts of each. All right, so I'm going to put like maybe a teaspoon of the vinegar, teaspoon of my thick soy. There we go. And a teaspoon. Now this is really hot. So a teaspoon of this is really hot. So if you um, it, it's always easier to have a little less, but it's really good. And we'll just kind of give that a little stir. There we go. Yum. So you can use some different flavors here. And what we'll do now is let's take a look in here one more time. Oh yeah, I can, I can see it right up around the edges. It's nice and kind of golden brown now. So here we go. This is, uh, this is where the, uh, the chef panics. And so you don't want to panic. What you want to do is just crack the, the cover just a little bit now I'm just going to put in a couple tablespoons. I'm not boiling these. What we'll do is we'll just, here it goes, you hear that? There we go. And we're going to let that cook for like maybe two minutes. Okay, and you can see these guys are in a hard boil. I'm going to just simply add a little more cold water, stop that hard boil. They're already floating, so I think probably by the time this reaches a hard boil again, I think they'll be ready to go. We won't need to go three cups, so to speak. Uh, particularly because this is a relatively small pot, and we only have five dumplings in there, right? If we had a, you know, a full meal of, uh, you know, a couple dozen dumplings in there feeding a, 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 the full family, then we'd have a bigger pot. It would take it, there's more heat and so on and so forth. So these are going pretty quick. All right. So let's see here. You know what I'm going to do is actually not all that different. Although <clears throat> same thing, I like the vinegar. Um, but I'm going to use regular soy as opposed to the thicker stuff. And so I do like this kind of combination of salty and the sour. And then I like the heat as well, but <clears throat> you've also, I just saw, you've got this uh, Sichuan peppercorn oil. So this oil 
interestingly. So Sichuan peppercorns from the prickly ash tree, they provide the numbing sensation. It's not really heat so much as numbing, what Sichuan often calls ma la, meaning numbing heat. And so there's the heat from the chili oil and the numbing from the that oil, and then that will give us the combination of the two. So these actually are not all that different. And we'll test those out. This is almost back to rolling boys, so they're almost ready to go. And these guys, let's see how they're doing. Most of that water's gone, but not all of it. You usually want to cook it until all the water's kind of boiled off, right? Uh, so let's see here. Those guys, I think, are ready to go. Let me get a bowl. There's a bowl. Pull these out. Let me get another bowl for Chris. Let me Chris a bowl. Here. Coin dumpling there. All right. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah. Get this over right here. Ooh. Yeah, I think we can close the heat there. And the boiling water can go on there too. Go. All right. So, what do you think? Looking good. So we can even see here. I don't know if I'm going to try. I'm not going to try the big dumpling there. So here's I'm not sure how you eat that one. It is a little big, so we might have to work on if I can make them even smaller to yeah. make one dumpling that is eatable with with uh, yeah. put by one person. But. All right, nice. Hmm. So you can you can double dip in your own dip in your own right. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh, so here's the spinach ones are pretty. Oop. So brown on the bottom, I hope. Yeah. All right. So there we go. So brown there's brown on the, on the bottom. Nice bright green on the top. That's really pretty. So dip that. I think this chef who invented these, according to that story, he, he was following long long before uh, Julia Childs ever said, like, never apologize and don't really tell people what you made until it's made because then you just rename it to what you need it to be named. That's right. So you don't start off by telling them, I'm making a souffle because if it falls, then you just, oh, I made a pudding. <laughs> mm. All right, so that was fun. Dumplings for New Year. All right, happy Year of the Tiger. Year of the Tiger, so we'll need to see if there's any tiger-specific foods. Oh, I'm sure there are. Probably are, just yeah, not yeah. sure what they are. We'll do a little research. All right, so that's it. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Come on down to my kitchen. Won't you come into my kitchen? Come into my kitchen. Come on down to my kitchen. Come on.